Hi everyone, Josh Wilson here from LaunchSite once again. It is now uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, the top of the hour, wherever you are. So I wanna welcome you all to this session on Zerti, which is gonna be presented by Inga Donkervoort and Tom Reinders. So uh, because time is short, I wanna hand it directly over to Inga and Tom. Take it away, gang. Hello, thank you, Josh. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> okay. I'm giving you a very short presentation on Zerti. In uh, 20 minutes, I have to tell a lot. So uh, maybe I talk a bit quick, but uh, that's because of the 20 minutes. <laughs> I have a very nice uh, crew with me, uh, Tom Reinders, um, Julian Tenney and Ron Mitchell. So they're all in the chat. So if you have questions, you can ask them. And uh, if you don't want to listen to me, you can uh, ask questions to them the whole 20 minutes if you want. Uh, as you can see here, um, uh, that's me. Um, you don't have a video of me, I think, at the moment, but uh, I am a bit gray now. That's not because of the project, it's just because uh, of my age. <laughs> I will um, shut it down because of the bandwidth. Um, this um, a period conference, uh, we will do some sessions about 30. Uh, one will be done by me and the other will be done by Tom. But in the chat, you also can see uh, Ron. He has a picture of our community because we are not alone. We have a very active community behind us. Uh, this is Ron Mitchell. I should add an arrow here. And this is Julian. And he is not paying attention here, but normally he does. <laughs> And um, this is our training day at the Zerti Conference 2018. For the people who don't know what Zerti is, Zerti is um, a conference, an, um, an authoring tool, a content creation tool, where you can very easily create modules um, from a small uh, website, a mini website, to a module with all kinds of interactivities in it. And uh, you can do that together with, uh, with your, your group and develop it together. You can share the, we call it learning objects. So you can sh share the learning objects. And uh, once it's created, you can very easily um, use it in your learning environment or the website or whatever. And you can use LTI or um, a link or just embed it or SCORM. Uh, there are different possibilities to do that. So this learning object, or this, this is one of the possibilities that you can create in uh, Zerti. This is a bootstrap template. I will share it with you. Uh, there's a lot more of information in it than I'm going to tell you, but uh, I will uh, walk you through and then I share it in the Tricycai and you can uh, see it there. Uh, five years ago already, uh, for the, uh, the one of the first, I think the first uh, Aperio uh, conferences that we uh, joined, uh, Ron created a very nice uh, video about the history of Zerti. I'm not going to show you, but um, it's still um, actual, except for the last five years. Um, in May 2003, Julian Tenney, um, oh, there was some user of Zerti that he called uh, she called him the Steve Jobs of Zerti, but he started to develop learning content more quickly and uh, built um, a tool in Flash uh, at the University of Nottingham, there, was, uh, there it started. Then in September 2006, the first free version of Zerti was there. And originally it was especially for developers who could write scripts. Then in 2008, it became an open source software. And in 2009, you had the first uh, version of Zerti Online Toolkits uh, via the web. September 2011, uh, there was a total uh, project on internationalization. So it, uh, it's not only used then anymore in the UK, but uh, around the world. And it was possible to translate it in various languages. And then a very special moment. In the summer of 2015, we were uh, added to the Aperio Foundation. And also in the same year, uh, we developed a WYSIWYG editor and all flesh was gone. 
Then in April 2018, uh, we added LTI and XAPI. Oh, and before we added SCORM, but I didn't mention that. And then in June 2018, a 30 dashboard and a, an adaptive content page, I will tell you more later, were created. And then at October 2019, the last release of 30 was there with much more improvements and a lot of new pages. And one of them I want to mention, that's uh, our um, new page, it's called X from I, and that's born at the Aperion conference in 2018. Uh, because uh, Michael Friesen, I don't know if you know him or you joined his sessions, uh, he won the Atlas Awards that year, or one of the Atlas Awards that year. And he asked us, um, uh, there is no tool that can do uh, this and this and this. And then our developer, Tom, who's also here, um, said, okay, I will give it a try. And now two years later, that page is in. Uh, I didn't hear, hear from, back from Michael, but <laughs> I hope to hear from him soon. Some facts and figures, uh, others than I already mentioned. We try to um, release two to four times a year. And I said we try. We have a lot of small releases, but uh, two to four is the more bigger releases. Uh, the last uh, Xeta release, uh, so from uh, the... 2019 is downloaded already for 1524 times and as you can see from the uh, releases before that's uh, decreasing we have 1200 active forum members um, and a very active worldwide community then i will show you an example from what you can create with 30 for example this one uh, i will open it this is a mini website, it's in Dutch, so if your Dutch is okay, you can read it. Um, this is made by um, a, a teacher of four teachers that want to learn more about micro-learning. And this is a, a, a user that had only, uh, I think, uh, one week 30. And you can create very easy, very nice uh, mini websites with videos, with uh, images, with uh, podcast with text and another example so this was the mini website we have different um, uh, templates you can use so one is the mini website another one is with all kinds of interactivities and I have one here this is a project about Robotica and uh, you can start here you learn some text go to the next pages and do some uh, interactivities in it and um, so this is a totally different way of using uh, 30 and you can also use them together for example uh, once a school uh, one of the things that the 30 community really wants is share and reuse and it's very easy to create uh, modules share them with others and they can add it to their uh, installation and uh, reuse it again and um, there's a lot of going on in the Netherlands uh, with that. And this is, for example, a school that opens up all their uh, modules and you can download them and um, import them in your own set installation. Then when you develop with uh, 30, uh, you have a working space. I will make it a bit bigger. This is the workspace where you can create a learning objects. On the left side, you see your um, uh, folders with the learning objects in it, and in the middle, some information, and on the right, you crea can create the uh, templates. So the 30 online toolkit template, I think we have 70 interactive pages there. Uh, the bootstrap template, that's the small mini website, and a decision tree template where you can, as the word said, make a decision tree. When you go into a learning object, in this case, it's um, set online toolkits with the 70 different pages. You can choose new uh, pages here above. And on the left side, you see all the pages you created. When you're ready you, uh, and you want to look at it, you click play or publish when you want to publish it. Then the goals and developments uh, that we had in 2018. In 2018, we, say, we said 
making it possible for non-programmers to use learning analytics and develop adaptive learning without programming. And in the years uh, after that, we did, uh, uh, we worked very hard to make that happen. And uh, we have uh, some projects and I will show that uh, to you if you come to my session tomorrow, uh, that uh, really works with uh, analytics and with the adaptive content page. So we add uh, XAPI, uh, we add uh, LTI, uh, and that's uh, Chugi, and that's the session uh, after this. Uh, we add learning analytics in a, in a dashboard, and uh, in 2019, we had the adaptive content page. Every time we have a release, we created um, a new page in the set of release notes, and you can see there all the new things. The learning analytics. We created the dashboard in 30. And um, for example, when you have a learning environment where you, you don't have enough information about what the students are doing in their assignments, uh, you can use 30 in that learning environment and have this dashboard um, to see what, uh, what the, um, the, the group is doing. In this case, you see uh, the activity, you see uh, uh, some um, information, uh, the member of students, the member of sessions, uh, the score, and uh, you see uh, the students on the, on the left, or you can have that also um, anonymized if you want, and you can see what the results are. And as you see, the first student uh, has it completed, but I don't think that he did it uh, okay. So when you go, further deeper in this dashboard, you can to go to a question and uh, look at the scores for a question. So in this case, there were 20 users doing this question and um, the, uh, the average that they were doing this was nine seconds. So you have more information when you go deeper into the dashboard. And also when you click on one line, you see the average or the results of one student. So this is a student, this line, and I can see his results and I, I can really see what he's doing in what his results are in the quiz or in a multiple choice question or whatever. So this is the learning analytics. Then um, we are going to have uh, uh, new developments in uh, the next uh, yeah, uh, half year or a year or so. We will have some new pages and we're working on this. And I think this is a surprise for uh, an, uh, some members of the Zerdi community as well. Um, we're working on the interactive video page, on a timeline page, on a crossword puzzle, a uh, hotspot with tracking and uh, interactive 360 images. Um, and uh, another thing that we already uh, have, but we don't, uh, we are just testing it. Um, that is that you can add sub templates. Um, so you saw the templates on the right side, you can choose of that what the templates that we created, but you can now also add your own template by just making a learning object and import it as a template. And another thing uh, is to make it much more easier for uh, a whole group of uh, teachers to start working with it, is that we created Xerti uh, Simple. So you can uh, say only those pages can be used in this template and the, those are the things that you have to add. And then you can create a nice learning object instead of that they get all the possibilities. It's not difficult, but it's a lot. Uh, then it's something for the, uh, the developers, a conditional options in the wizard. Sometimes when you choose something, you saw all the options also from the other uh, things you, you could choose. And uh, we do now a project that you can, uh, that you only see the, uh, option, the options that are connecting to that, um, uh, the option you choose. Then we added light boxes. Every image that is in Xerti will be, um, uh, can be used as a light box, uh, only on the pages where it's useful. We are going to add tracking in the bootstrap. So uh, you can add um, uh, a Xerti module with all, uh, with all kinds of interactivities into a bootstrap template. 
and uh, till now you couldn't track it but uh, soon uh, it's possible to track that also and then you can uh, get also that information in your learning analytics we are working on lti 1.3 and the last thing we worked on really hard and is still in developing is the adaptive learning, uh, the adaptive content page uh, where you that you can use for adaptive learning. And not only for adaptive learning, but also for a very small, very, very uh, uh, say, a sort of um, uh, small uh, uh, graphics, poor man's graphics, we, we call it. So what you see here, this is one uh, example of the adaptive content page. Uh, I loaded in information from my 30 object. So I'm a student and I uh, did a formative assessment, the uh, uh, learning object module, and uh, these are my results. So I have a score of 50%. I here can see what my other classmates did. And below I get, uh, and this is the adaptive part, I get a link, for example, to another module, so I can go on. Uh, in this case, I, I am on an intermediate level, so I go to a module that's on intermediate level. But when I did uh, scored 100%, for example, I could go to a module that's uh, really to um, learn more uh, when I'm, uh, I scored worse, then I'm going to a module to, to do it again. And this is a very, very powerful thing in Xerti. And tomorrow we will have a demonstration of that from uh, a few of our users uh, about that adaptive content page. On Thursday, we have uh, learning analytics and Xerti. That's a more technical uh, session. And uh, yeah, due of the corona, our uh, Xerti conference was skipped. So uh, we hope that we have the conference now in the winter or in the spring. Uh, and we hope, uh, we invite you all, <laughs> and we hope you come to Brussels if, you, if we can fly again. So I'm on the end of the presentation. Uh, if you want any information, uh, here are some links. You can also send us an email or uh, ask us in the next few days. Um, maybe there are some questions. I see we have a few minutes left. I think my team already answered all of your questions. <laughs> <laughs>